is January 7th, 2015. We are not expecting Mr. Koretz or Mr. Wezar, but do expect Mr. Labange will arrive shortly. So with that, what we'll do is let's go ahead and take items one and two together. I hope our candidates, our commissioners don't mind. Let's hear from Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Dake. He's item number two. And from Mr. Murray. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Councilman Blumenfeld. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, it's our pleasure to be here today um, to have the opportunity to continue to serve the citizens and people of Los Angeles on the Metropolitan Water District Board. Um, a lot of issues on the table. And I think these next three years are going to be particularly challenging. Uh, with a number of issues that in particular impact the city of LA vis-a-vis -vis our water supply uh, as well as groundwater cleanup and a number of things that I'm sure each of you and, and I know Councilman Fuentes you in particular are very much involved in so um, I'm prepared to answer whatever questions you might have but really look forward to continuing to serve the city. Sure. The drought's not over. There's a lot more work to do and uh, we're all in it together. Great. Well, I, um, uh, first of all, want to thank you for your service thus far to MWD and uh, Mr. Murray in particular for uh, being so helpful and helping me understand some of the sort of larger issues on our recent Bay Delta <coughs> tour that we took. Um, I uh, am going to be very happy to support the two of you and to continue to find work at MWD, and I imagine that my colleagues will as well. As soon as we have a quorum, we'll go ahead and do that. But just since I've got the two of you here, um, understandably the drought is, I think, uh, by and large one of the sort of top items that we all have to be uh, looking to and addressing. But I wanted to see if you all would sort of give me a little perspective on sort of what... Um, What's sort of uh, uh, in line for 2015? What is it that we can see from, from MET uh, and how can we partner uh, through DWP? And then the, the, the real sort of question that I'd like for you all to uh, sort of help me with is the rebate program uh, is going, I think, very well uh, for the grass, uh, cash for grass um, sort of rebate program and in, I introduced a motion recently uh, that actually at a re recent Mission Hills Neighborhood Council meeting as a matter of example I've had folks uh, uh, really voice their support for and the motion uh, essentially what it does is it says that um, right now we have the cash for grass program and I think it's fairly obvious what it does and what it's for but in districts like mine, and I imagine different parts of the city of Los Angeles, a lot of us who um, um, sort of feel the pinch of the cost of water turn off our sprinklers. We become sort of conservationists, and we let our grass die. And as a result, there isn't any <clears throat> real sort of grass there to be able to demonstrate on the website with the five photos and the form and all of that stuff to say, hey, we want to trade it in for... Uh, uh, because there isn't any turf there. And so I introduced a motion that tries to explore the idea that if people have the infrastructure, i.e. the plumbing, the uh, sprinkler systems, et cetera, and if they're anything like some of the folks that I uh, know well and represent, um, the second that we start getting a little bit of rain and we start seeing a little green, we'll turn the systems back on and we're sort of back where we were, not having sort of re- uh, uh, tilled and reframed people's perspectives about drought tolerant uh, native uh, plants. And so I, I'm hoping that um, there isn't a legal issue uh, with the funding from MWD's perspective to be able to do that because I'd understand that rate based dollars and green grass means that we're now increasing water supply by not watering that green grass. But if the grass happens to be yellow and dead, I hope that there isn't a legal issue there that would prevent us from ideally honoring the same rebate program or maybe, maybe even doing something a little bit less, but making it so that folks can pivot their sort of water-hungry sort of uh, landscaping for efficient landscaping because they've, they've opted to not turn on the water. So th that's sort of really what I'd like to figure out how you all can help me with. But in the meantime, if you can just tell me sort of the top two, three things that you think 2015 and MWD um, are, are going to have in store for 
their uh, customers and for the city of Los Angeles. How about if I take the graph and you take the year okay. ahead? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've been thinking about this a little, bo a little bit since that motion appeared, and uh, I think it could be handled in this drought rebound context that you described. You know, the ratepayers, the DWP ratepayers or the MWD ratepayers, would each they would justly seek a benefit for any commitment that they made. So, for the for the utility, they need to have a commitment from the homeowner to keep their grass brown. And I think that gets down to having a budget. If you were to, I, and this is totally a you know off the wall concept, sure. but budgeting for each of us is something that's coming in the future. A lot of other municipalities have a budget, so I can imagine a program where you could agree to have a budget, and that would create a benefit for the utility. And then the homeowner could get their. It might not be the same rebate, but some value in exchange for having the budget. You know, I think that would be one way to approach it. I don't know if it's legal or not. I'm a landscape architect, you know. Sure. But the phenomena you describe, I think, is a really important one for MET and all the other utilities to recognize. Because the real conservers, you know, I, my office is in Boyle Heights, and I see the dynamic you describe all the time. Those conservers deserve to get the rebate in some form, too, for their actions. Right. Right. No, and, and I think I, I, I really sort of like the way you put it, because there will be a drought rebound and the question becomes how do we sort of uh, not sort of how do we exploit the opportunity that the drought ideally is at the forefront of people's minds so that we change out their sort of infrastructure for something that is more resilient and sustainable so we will certainly I know DWP staff is here hopefully they've taken note about potentially looking at a fund or uh, something that we can sort of uh, legally defend in terms of sort of what's what's in what's in the future of MWD and its and its customers you know, the city of Los Angeles has actually led at MWD to both protect and increase the amount of funding for the conservation program there. It wasn't that many years ago that the budget for that was less than $20 million, and the staff at MWD was having a problem even spending the entire $20 million. Subsequently, we've increased the budget for conservation to $40 million. Now it's up to $60 million, and some say it could be going as close to $100 million. One of the questions, of course, or issues that comes up is the things like high-efficiency toilets, you know, washing machines. Some of those now have become industry standard. So is that any longer some of the best use of some of those dollars? The grass going to drought-tolerant plants is an absolute opportunity uh, area for, uh, for the agency. And that's why increasing that budget, because that's not inexpensive. The city of Los Angeles also leads because we put money on top of that money. And there are a number of the other water districts of the 26 districts that are a part of MET that historically they don't put money on top of what MET gives them. And so they either don't do anything or they try to get local resource program funds from MET and then that's what it is. So I think as we look into 2015, LA is going to continue to lead on this and I think working with the leadership of the council, the mayor, the city, as you know, our population has grown exponentially over the last decade, yet our water usage has not. We get penalized a little bit for that because now everybody says we want 20% savings on water. Well, what, how much more difficult is it when you're one of those communities that really has worked hard to conserve right. as opposed to the folks who haven't done anything? Um, but also related to the drought uh, here in L.A. is, of course, doing the cleanup of the, the San Fernando Basin. And we pushed through a project, which a uh, $20 million project to clean up a couple of the wellheads. In fact, a couple of years ago, I think the, in the Tahunga area, we did some wellhead cleaning there. Um, and, and right now, DWP has moved aggressively to position itself to move on that project. MET was going to provide the labor because they could get in very quickly and do it. The city would repay MET for going ahead and getting the work done. And frankly, at this point, I think it's just a matter of uh, you know, working with the, the bargaining unit up at uh, DWP to, to get that work moved out. But I think that's something that we anticipate more of being needed as we move forward because eventually taking the long view, it's not going to happen overnight, but we are going to be looking at water recycling. And when you recycle the water, you've got to have some place to put it. Right. And for Los Angeles, the San Fernando Basin is one of those places that's, that's what William Mulholland originally had intended, right? Bring it down from the Owens Valley, one of, the, Chinatown, one of the places that that water would go is under the ground in the San Fernando Basin, but that basin has become contaminated over the decades. 
getting it cleaned up is particularly important as LA really moves to a position ultimately of water independence. And I think that ultimately should be the goal of anyone working on behalf of the city of LA from the council, the mayor, met board members and others to look to the day when Los Angeles would have a level of true water independence. Very good, Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, enjoy the conversation. I'm uh, looking forward to, to for both of you to continue continue your great service. Uh, we were talking about the rebate program and, and Met's involvement with that. I was also reminded of my other favorite way to try to get this uh, more water conservation is through the the PACE program and or the Hero program or some variant thereof, which we're moving with the city and DWP. But what's Met's involvement with that, and how can how can you help facilitate that to happen from uh, Met's perspective? Yeah, I don't think Met has participated in PACE to my knowledge. You know, that's the on uh, uh, on, on rate on bill. of utility bill funding. Yeah, so I don't think they've done anything on that. But we're happy to press them on it. That'd be worthwhile. Well, I, I'd love it if you press them on it. Okay. It's a way of history. It was you know it was my legislation in the state that allowed us to to move forward with that mm -hmm. process, and we have some. Uh, actions here at the city, of, of which Mr. Mm -hmm. Mendez and I have both been working on this together um, to get the city <coughs> moving on this because the county has its program and we want to join their program. But uh, MET could actually add a lot of value to a program like this in the sense that, you know, what are we talking about? We're talking about creating upfront financing mm -hmm. where the individuals don't have to, you know, or businesses don't have to pay for it, but you need a, you need a funding source and then you pay it back over time. So you get a big resource like MET behind it, um, it's just a question of financing. And it's, you know, somebody who's got a big, deep enough pocket to finance something, it won't cost MET anything in the long run because it, if it's financed properly, but it could be a tremendous uh, shot in the arm, you know, adrenaline shot for conservation. So it's where I think is going to be the big goal. Um, but so I would urge you both to, uh, to light a fire in, in MET to to make that happen. Councilman, actually the timing on that is very good because uh, there are those of us who are pushing right now to reopen the discussion of the Integrated Resources Program over at MWD and in really taking a look at any number of different ways that projects can be financed that can bring about conservation as a part of one of those components of the Integrated Resources Plan. So I think the timing on this is we're going to be having that discussion and this is a, an excellent piece to actually put right on top of the table in that discussion. Great. Thanks for the tip. Very good. Well, I, d I don't believe there's any public comment cards on it, but we'll have satisfied it when we go to committee uh, council. Uh, so we'll go ahead and communicate to the council the affirmative support of both you, Mr. Dake, and Mr. Murray. And uh, as soon as Mr. Labange gets here, we'll make it super official and, uh, and get it done. I appreciate your service, your perspective. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your continued service. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. All right. Uh, item number three. Item number three. Motion LaBonge O'Farrell relative to request in her department and water and power to work with Caltrans study the feasibility of using reclaimed water in the freeway irrigation system. We have stat representatives from Department of Water and Power as well as Caltrans. Well, so what I was going to do is um, ask, uh, well, first of all, if folks are here for items five, four, five, six, or seven, my hope was that we could take those on consent. Sure. Um, so if you're here for five, four, five, six, or seven, we're going to take those on consent. And I was going to ask that you all come back with a, a written report for Mr. LeBonge. That's why I, I also called, uh, hoping that he'd be here to do some of the verbal stuff. But we might all be better suited here if uh, you come back with a written report. But I do have some folks who have made their way to come and testify. So let's go ahead and, uh, at a minimum, take the uh, comments from uh, Ed uh, Siri Bodhi from the state of California's Department of Transportation and, and from Caltrans, from Roger Yeo. Do you all have some, uh, some comments on all of this to make your trip worthwhile? <laughs> Understanding that we're going to uh, hold the item and, and still uh, ask for a written report, but we'll, for the record, get your, your, your comments, questions, or concerns about this motion. Thank you. Maybe I'll start. Uh, thank you, Chairman Fuentes and uh, Council Member. Bloomfield. Uh, my name is Roger Yo. I'm with Caltrans External Affairs. Thank you for uh, uh, having us here to talk about what um, specifics Caltrans has done in terms of uh, dealing with this drought emergency. And actually, I have uh, S. Sir Bodhi here. He is our dist district landscape architect. 
he has the specifics uh, as to uh, uh, the, the things that we have done in helping the drought, with the drought. So uh, go ahead. Good afternoon. If you um, could pull up the mic so we can, there we go. Perfect. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ed Sarabodi. Uh, I'm a uh, landscape architect with Caltrans. Uh, water conservation effort has been ongoing from, for Caltrans for many, many years. Uh, throughout the two counties that we handle, from District 7, Ventura, and L.A., we have more than 60 recycled water point of connections uh, in L.A. City proper, uh, 2 or 3 Pacific. Um, we like to work with uh, LADWP for, uh, for future projects where our policy is um, we will use recycled water where it's uh, feasible, where it's available. That's mandate policy. Um, a lot of time, uh, the recycle line is away from the freeways, and to bring that to the freeway, there's some costs involved, but, but we like to open that conversation and talk to your folks about it. Uh, we also has been receiving some funding from our headquarters, and this is uh, due to the mandate from the governors on water reduction, water conservation. Last year, we upgraded the irrigation controllers to be a weather base uh, type controllers used based on you know uh, weather when it's hot irrigate when it's rain do not irrigate uh, we've been upgrading several controllers uh, throughout the districts uh, in particular in LA Hollywood freeway downtown 101 freeway Long Beach freeway uh, and, and many more the the I just want to bring some issue on our side that, that we have in-house is that the irrigation system that we have or the landscape that we have along the freeways is old. So if you recall, if you live in L.A., the freeway was built in the 40 to 50. The irrigation landscape was put then, and not too many had been upgraded, so we, we deal with old infrastructure, just like your water pipe. Um, the resource to maintain the landscape has been cut down so much. Uh, we down to uh, very few staff. I'll give you an example. For Hollywood Freeway, we have five staff to maintain the landscape, and that's from downtown to the 170. So think about five people to maintain that landscape. You're comparing your park, your golf course, that's very limited. Um, Funding for roadside or landscape is very limited on our side, too. A lot of money has been spent on pavement, on safety, guardrails, and, and things that, you know, for more risk. Landscaping is kind of like on the side, but, but then again, irrigation is related to landscape. So when you see dying landscape, it's because of water, because of old infrastructure. Um, once again, Caltrans would, would be happy to enter into... Uh, uh, agreement to bring recycled water to to make new connection where it's feasible. And, and where, I'm sorry, a quick question. Where do you get your water now? Do you buy it from the from Department of Water and Power? Portable from LADWP, all the vendors throughout the counties. And so, so but you, you purchase the water? Yes, correct. Okay, all yes. right. We have water meters throughout the, the districts. Yeah, we, we work with, if I may augment, we work with 60 different water purveyors in LA and Ventura counties, and obviously LA, DWP is one of the largest, is, is the largest. And um, if I may augment, last year, with all the smart irrigation systems that we have installed statewide, we saved about 45% water of what we used to, to, to spend in, in the past. And um, as Ed said, uh, we have some smart controllers installed on the Hollywood Freeway corridor, and recently Councilmember O'Farrell has approached us in having a discussion about possibly planting some trees on the corridor to beautify uh, this gateway to downtown L.A., and we are uh, very happy to have the opportunity to work with the city in doing something like that, but in doing so, we much prefer that, you know, that new betterments will be irrigated with uh, reclaimed water. And so um, our, new, our new policy is that in the past, we try our best to be in compliance with AB 371. The, if I remember that correctly, it's the uh, Water Recycling Act of 2006, where if a water purveyor is planning on bringing recycled water to, to Caltrans, let us know 10 years ahead of time so that we can put in the necessary infrastructure to support that. 
And our new direction is that if there are some low-hanging fruits, some pipes nearby, we potentially could, Caltrans could, make a small financial contribution towards the project to help bring the pipeline to our right-of-way. So we are going to be working with DWP to uh, identify those opportunities. Mr. Blumenfeld? Just sort of a technical question, <clears throat> out of ignorance, really. Once, once you have a link to a recycled water in one area, are you legally limited as you cross jurisdictions? I mean, if you could extend that pipeline along the highway through a couple different jurisdictions, can you use that water, or do you have to buy different water every time you cross a jurisdiction? I am unfamiliar with that. I can't answer that. Yeah, I... you, you'd have to buy different water from the different purveyors. Because we, we sell with the city of Los Angeles, and so we, basically what happens is the Bureau of Sanitation treats the water. Basically when it goes over, then we take, it's it considered DWP or city of Los Angeles water that we are responsible for selling. So if it goes, let's say through the 110, it goes into the city of Carson or such, it would not be our service territory, and then they would have to go to that purveyor to get the so water. Even, even though they may have a continuous sure. link through multiple jurisdictions, um, and there may be a recycled water in one link, they can't use that water if they, they can't just build a longer pipe and use it. Well, I guess it would probably depend what the meter, where the meter would be, but so there's certain, you know, there's certain, there will be certain limitations to that, but in general, if the meter and we're serving from our system, it, it, we'd have to uh, work with the other agencies to determine, you know, how we could work that out. I'm not saying that it, it couldn't be done, but it's not something where ultimately you know, we could start running pipe through another city and such and saying, okay, we, yeah. we're I mean, serving. I, I guess, the, you know, the underlying thought here is we've got technical problems, which is getting the water there and figuring out how to do it. Uh, and then, which may be the 90% of the problems, I don't know. But then there may be other, these jurisdictional problems, and that's where we can come in as as council members and maybe fix some of that if that's genuinely a real stumbling block. I, I don't know. I'm just making that up. That It, it just occurred to me that that could be, mm -hmm. um, you know, like Calabasas right outside of L.A., they, they have a lot of recycled water that right. they actually are able to sell to folks in portions of yeah. L.A. Um, I don't know if we're able to, to pick that water off at, at the 101 and, and then, you know, why not run it along the whole 101 or when yeah. we get to Tillman, use the Tillman water and well, actually, we're doing things like that. that. It's good that you mentioned that in terms of Las Virgenes and Calabasas and actually Burbank because we are working with the city of Burbank where we will be taking um, their recycled water. They're actually going to be helping us and putting some of the infrastructure in and extending it into the city of L.A. It will be the city of... The water is coming from the city of Burbank, but we will then... It will be coming into the city of L.A. We will be selling it, and actually some of that water will be going to Caltrans to be used on the 170 freeway. Similar, we're looking at Los Virginis and having an agreement with them and looking at a preliminary study to get pipeline to uh, the city of Los Angeles to be able to use some of their excess water. So, yes, we, we are looking at those opportunities because they are there and to try to take advantage of it. As, as they said, one of the challenges we have is, you know, the source of the reclaimed water and the pipeline is not always exactly where you'd like to use it. And we're always trying to look at the uh, highest and best use for that water. And so depending on where you are, for instance, in the valley, um, one of our highest and best uses is going to be for the water replenishment so we could spread that water eventually. But opportunities come up. We are certainly going to be working with Caltrans to try to uh, work with them on their needs for the use of reclaimed water. But, it, but it's your sense that the, the jurisdictional thing is not a barrier to getting recycled water used? Well, a major barrier. Y yeah, I think, I think we would be able to work with that because we have with other agencies. So if there was something that came up, we, we would be talking with them. So I think we could work it out. Why don't, because I think this is something that, uh, one, Mr. Labonge wants to be a, a, a part of, and two, I think it's actually really good, uh, uh, like most of the motions, this is a very good motion that we would love to see a written report come back on so we can sort of take a look at it and understand sort of what uh, the, the process and uh, sort of shortcomings and, and good news there is so that we can move forward because this is, uh, uh, I think, important. Um, so w let's go ahead and hold that item. We'll ask you to come back with a written report. Thank you for the information, and you'll have an opportunity to read the report and lend some additional thoughts to that as we move forward. 
Um, so that uh, concludes the agenda. The four, five, six, and seven are in consent, and items one and two will be communicated to the full city council as uh, affirmative uh, support. And um, there is no general public comment. No. no. Very good. We're adjourned. All right. Efficient. Yeah.